My name is Kaisa Sibelius and I'm the coordinator of the AI for Cities project and come from the Forum Birium Helsinki, the development company of the city of Helsinki. And here with me is also my colleague, uh, Petteri Rekoma, who is he's the technology specialist in this project. And uh, we are only shortly presenting the project and the request for uh, tenders. Very, uh, and, and if you like hear more about the project or PCP or selection or awarding criteria as a process, please visit our web uh, YouTube um, channel, the Forum Williams uh, channel. And here is the link. You can find these short videos which we have uh, divided uh, into five, five uh, sections. And you will get these materials afterwards, so don't worry to get those links. And we are recording this webinar as well. And, and um, if you have any questions, please write them on the chat and we will go through them in the end of the webinar. And also we are uh, replying, answering some of the questions we have got from you advanced. So let's start. And shortly, shortly, the project that maybe many of them you have already heard, but but um, this is the this is the starting point and uh, and need for this project. So the, all the, the all these cities have set a target to become on, on carbon neutral by uh, 2050 at latest, and and uh, for example, most. Ambitious is the Copenhagen, which want to achieve it already by 2025. And average uh, 84% uh, of the CO emissions in the Western European cities come from the energy and transportation, but uh, it varies. And, and for example, here is shown that in Helsinki, the rate is even 95%. And uh, addition to supporting the climate goals of the cities, and other strategic goal is to support the digitalization and data strategies of the cities. And, and we are, when we are talking about the objectives of the project, we like to enhance the better living and working conditions for the citizens. And, and um, addition to lower the carbon print, we would like to reduce the energy consumption and cost, of course. And uh, here you can see the the overall structure of the PCP, which we are also following in AI for Cities, and and if I shortly um, present that what's what's uh, in there, so now we are talking about those fa phases one, two, and three, and uh, in phase one we are um, this is for the solution design, and we are looking for minimum twenty suppliers per mobility or an energy lots, and and which means that 40 suppliers in total uh, is to, is planned to to uh, is going to plan the exhaustive technical specification on, of the solution and plan the prototype development uh, in three months. And this large number of of, of suppliers reflect a, an expected wide variety of proposed solutions covering several of the sub challenges or needs identified by the cities which you can find from the tender document one. The estimated budget for this phase is 1.6 million euros, and, and which means that maximum 40,000 um, euros per supplier. And in phase two, you are, it's based on the phase one outputs and evaluation of the suppliers, and, and it's selected uh, after those uh, selection, um, uh, evaluations we are selecting companies going moving forward to the phase two and we expect to select minimum 10 suppliers per lot in phase two and this number can can change depending on the quality of the offers and budget availability and maximum budget is is doubled per supplier and it can be up to 80,000 euros you will have uh, four months to develop uh, the prototypes in, in phase two, and we are expect uh, the suppliers to focus on the prototype development in a lean and agile way. So by the end of the phase, they are mature enough to be able to test it at the uh, end of this phase in a lab environment. 
And in the beginning of 2022, we will start the six month long phase three, where approximately three of the most interesting and promising solutions per lot will be piloted at least in two of buyers group cities. The piloting can um, con convince the markets uh, the potential of the solution. And, and again, this number can be changed depending on the quality of the offers and budget availability, but maximum, maximum the budget can be 240,000 euros per supplier. So let's uh, move on and, and um, very shortly about this, um, this job challenge we have predefined. Hello, I'm Petteri and I will be briefly uh, going through the our sub challenges. So we have two lots in our project mobility and energy and in lot one we have five cities present which are Amsterdam, Helsinki, Paris, Stavanger and Tallinn. And for both of these lots we have identified three sub challenges plus a wild card. Uh, so here's a list of the sub challenges for uh, lot one. So there's mobility as a service, uh, which means increasing the use of low emission forms of mobility like public transportation, active mobility and so on by providing better service. Then we have traffic flow optimization, which is about decreasing emissions by making traffic more fluent and by, by making the infrastructure to support low emission modes of transport. Then we have optimization of logistics, which is about streamlining and better coordination of commercial transport and urban logistics. And lastly, we have the wild card where you can offer your own solution to any kind of problem that you see. Uh, we wanted to include this wild card because there is definitely some other problems or uh, some areas where we need need new solutions that we are not aware of. Then in lot two energy, we have also five cities present, which are Amsterdam, Copenhagen, Helsinki, Paris and Stavanger. So Tallinn is missing from the energy lot and Copenhagen from mobility. Other cities are present in both lots. And here we have also, like I said, three sub challenges. We have flexible energy consumption, which is about flattening peak loads and using more renewable energy to decrease emissions. Uh, then as sub-challenge two, we have energy efficiency, which is about finding ways to use less energy by using energy more efficiently. And then we have development of renewable energy, uh, which is about finding ways to increase the use of renewable energy to new kind of AI solutions. And then a quick word about the data sets. So for, for those of you who haven't noticed them yet, we have a list of open data sets from all of our cities in our website. Uh, we have separated them to mobility and energy data there. So if you haven't done that already, you should definitely check them out. And also about data, it is also possible to use other data that you may have gathered from uh, yourself or that you uh, have gotten access from somewhere else. So uh, your data use is, doesn't have to be limited to this data that is present here on the website, but these are open data sets that can help you with your solution perhaps. Uh, then a few words about the award criteria uh, which are used to evaluate your solutions. So for phase one we have uh, separated these into five different categories. We have functional criteria, project management criteria, uh, non-functional criteria, commercial feasibility and price. And as you see the functional criteria which involves uh, CO2 emission reduction, use of AI and technical innovativeness of the solution has the most weight. So 40% of the total score will come from these three criteria. 
and then the other other categories have 20 percent or 10 percent respectively and uh, one important thing about this criteria is that for each of these we have a threshold of around 60 percent uh, you can see the exact threshold from the award criteria table in tenure document one uh, but this means that a supplier needs to get at least 60% of the points in each criteria to be able to advance to the next phase. But for more information on this, you can check tender document one and tender document two. And then a few words about the selection and evaluation of these tenders in, in phase one. And here is the process that we start with the administrative check and, and continues with the evaluation. And in order to be eligible, the tenders must submit all documents and declarations, which means forms from A to H, and pass the administrative check as well. Those um, forms you can find, for example, from the website. And in case that we will get more than 50 tenders per lot, there will be first the pre-evaluation on based on the executive summary in form H. And uh, from that, um, uh, after that, up to four, if we have that pre-evaluation, up, up to 45 tenders that exceed the threshold value of five will be evaluated by the technical evaluation committee. And, uh, and there is a video about those criteria available. And finally, the Procurious Steering Committee uh, of, uh, of City Representatives will confirm the selection of the, of the sub suppliers. And shortly about the tender submission, which is coming quite soon, that, that they, they are submitted electronically uh, via the website, our project website. And uh, you have to, tenders, you have to, to choose to for which lot you, your tender is submitted. It can't be sent twice. And in the consortiums, the lead tenderer submit the tender's document is, is and will be the main contact point during the PCP. And uh, all the documents must be uploaded separately because they are shared with the evaluator. So it's the reason for that. And please no scan it PDFs because the, then the search function does not work in, in those PDFs. Oh. And now, now we are moving on and going to the city present presentations and first one will be the Amsterdam, city of Amsterdam. And um, now I need to exit this yes. and, and now there's a Hania. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. I hope everyone can see this. Yes? I think, Kaiser, yeah. you can see it, right? Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for listening in. Uh, Amsterdam, for Amsterdam, I'd like to give you a short uh, update about what's happening in the mobility and energy sector in the city. Uh, then I'd like to say something about the test locations uh, that you might be working with. Uh, then about how are we doing public procurement and about data. Uh, update. So for mobility, what's uh, happening oh this is the other way around actually so on the left side you see uh, the energy update we have right now a deep retrofit project where we are looking at large-scale renovations uh yeah and making housing more sustainable furthermore furthermore we have a circular data platform uh where we're looking at uh, yeah collecting all the data that is needed in order to get circular circular economy and also the related uh, monitoring thereof then we have deep demonstration where we're working together with Climate Kick, uh, for example, about topics such as the new uh, energy infrastructure and also other building related topics. 
Then for uh, mobility on this side, sorry again, uh, we are actually um, creating now uh, beard hubs, so neighborhood hubs where we are uh, seeing to have a lot of shared mobility hubs and other services that the citizen, citizens can then share uh, in that neighborhood. Furthermore, we made a um, like a drukte monitor, which shows you actually how busy in real time a location is. That's also, of course, in combination with uh, what's happening with Corona. Then a uh, big topic innovation center for digital management. So we're really uh, putting a, a big focus on, on data here. Uh, where we are also looking to uh, collect all the mobility data in one spot and make it a portal so that companies can access certain information more easy, uh, anonymized and also, of course, uh, well, taking care of all the privacy issues. And at the end, the mobility center of the future, uh, that's how I would translate it, we're looking right now what's necessary uh, in the future, how's mobility going to look like in the future. So the team is actually really looking forward to your applications to also shape this further to understand what's in the market, what's the cutting edge, edge, edge technology that we can uh, expect in the future and how do we have to react to it uh, as a city. Test locations. Uh, I want to introduce two to you. It could also be that we're choosing another one, um, but the first one uh, is the Johan Cruyff Arena, which is the big uh, arena that we have here in Amsterdam. And that's actually a small little ecosystem in itself where we can do a lot of tests. Uh, the second location is, uh, it's called Marine Terrain, which is a closed off um, area where we can run tests without very complicated uh, procedures where we have to ask permission for certain things. So right now there are also loads of tests being done. Uh, you can see a couple of examples here, space for food or like autonomous driving uh, and other things. So most likely you're, the test that we're going to do uh, might happen here as well. And procurement related programs that we have. Um, maybe you know already that the PCP process doesn't mean uh, that you will be immediately uh, uh, bought uh, this, your product by the cities. So also there are different stages in the, in the project as Kaiser uh, explained. So let's say that you maybe uh, only get to concept development but you want to go further then there are different possibilities in Amsterdam. So always have a look at this web page, innovatiepartners.nl. It's a beta version at the moment, but we're developing it further also to have it in English later. And all the, the ideas that all the uh, innovation related projects will end up there. So you can have a look uh, and get your uh, solution that you maybe have uh, to sell it to us. Um, yes, let's go on. That's actually this one. So the website, you have an overview. Then we also have Startup and Residence, which is for startups and scale-ups. It's basically a startup accelerator. Uh, there are different programs always running. Right now we have Smart Mobility and Sustainability. You can have a look on the website what it exactly is. Have also um, Scale-Up, which uh, relates to basically that we want to scale up successful solutions. This is for everyone, for, for startups, scale-ups, SMEs and also corporates. And uh, yeah, we are basically working together with also other uh, municipalities or governments. So to really roll out your solution in the region that everyone can profit from it. So this is a bit larger uh, than the other one. Have a look here also uh, on that on the web page that I mentioned earlier for more uh, details. Okay. The last topic that I wanted to briefly mention data. There were a lot lots of questions what data are available. Please have a look also again on our website. Uh, there are loads of data sources already. For mobility, as I mentioned, there will be the uh, mobility portal coming up very soon. So when you are selected for this pro uh, project, it might be already available and you will be the first ones uh, to be able to use it. And also have a look on AmsterdamSmartCity.com. For example, there is an event coming up about uh, mass and what data are available and what's the, what are the dilemmas. And actually our data science team is also going to present, uh, present there. That's my brief 
presentation and I understand now that there is actually a uh, time for questions. Yes, if anybody has a question for Anya in Amsterdam, city of Amsterdam, so you can now ask or raise your hand or or have a chat question about um, so if anybody has anything on them. How yeah. can I contact you? Yeah, that's a <laughs> great question. You can uh, send in a, a question through the AI for Cities website and then it will come to me and I will answer it. Any specs yet on the data app is... Well, APIs what is, maybe? Oh, APIs. APIs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, well, there, if you look on the data.amsterdam uh, website, you will see also the different uh, APIs that are available. There's also a section where sometimes you actually only have a map, but you don't have an API. Uh, the possibility is if you are selected for this, um, for Air for Cities, we can have a look that we make it into an API. So there's also a request button on the website where you can request to have an API made about certain data. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on the innovation center as criteria for suppliers selection? Not part of core challenge. Maybe Manuel, you can explain this a little bit, what you mean? Yes, basically, um, I kind of seen from your presentation that you were uh, discussing about this uh, innovation center and the, that the digital center. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to know if we have a solution that supports those kind of initiatives, how much will that weight into the supplier selection? Will that be important or will that not uh, be considered? Because it's not part of the core mobility. Yeah, you, you're absolutely together. right. So um, this will is, I mean, it, it, that would be nice if it does, but uh, we are selecting purely on the challenges that we that we define together with all the cities. So it's not, you will not be selected if it would help us with our own other projects that are running. But we can, uh, you know, if you are selected, then uh, we can have a look if there are some other possibilities to cooperate. But uh, no, the selection will not be influenced by that. Okay, thank you. Thanks. And, uh, one general comment to, to all. We, have, we got uh, plenty of questions um, related that is our idea good or, or how you think about cities, think about those, uh, our idea. But unfortunately, we are not able to comment the individual ideas or solutions in this moment. So, so I, I can only say that, yes, we are interested in all kinds of solutions that help us to, to reduce the CO2 emissions. Yeah. And okay. do we still have time for another question, Kaisa, or? I Yes, you have. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Then I'll have uh, Tim asked, how did you define the scope for Innovati partners? What goes on there and what not? A uh, great question. So what goes on there is always if it has to do with you, the market. So if there's anything the city is looking for to buy, then we are going to put it uh, on there. So challenges, uh, but also pilots, but anything where basically you can also earn some money. Uh, but help us then to solve a problem. Um, regarding testing of the solution, do we choose the locations ourselves in the tender proposal stage or is this a discussion after? Yeah, also great, uh, great question. Actually, this will be decided together. Uh, this will be decided by the city, um, of course, in cooperation with you because you have to test there. So this is a discussion, but we you do you do not have to choose it. You can make a suggestion, and we can see if it's possible. Um, but mainly, that's why I showed the two examples. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Somebody has. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I maybe. When you're talking about energy efficiency and deep renovation, it mainly applied on residential housing, but the two test locations, Stadium and Arena Terrain, are they also more residential locations considered? Yeah, so these two big uh, test locations were just an example. If, of course, it needs to fit the challenge. So if it's about um, housing, then we will have a look what we can do. Uh, maybe you know it, in, in the Netherlands, we have housing corporations. 
there can be certain uh, yeah, partnerships that we can use to do a test. Otherwise, of course, we also have the buildings that are owned by the cities to do these kind of tests. OK, I think uh, yes. that's it in terms of questions. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Anja. And uh, next we move on, on the Copenhagen. And uh, our, our colleague um, from there, is it Tina or, or her colleague who is, is going to present what's, what's going on, on in Copenhagen? Now you can take the screen. Okay. Is there some some troubles with the connections or something? But uh, if there is some any problems now and and uh, we have to solve that, then we can uh, change the order and and uh, if Tallinn and Grigory, if you are ready there, so could you then share your screen and and. Um, Present the what's what's happening in in Tallinn. Oh, is it something? Some problems with the connections because um, is is Tina there or or Grigori from Tallinn? E -E. Hello. Hello. Is it my turn already? Sorry. Is it our turn already? Uh, yes. Are you Grigory? Yes, I yeah. am. Yes, you can. You can start now. Yeah. You can uh, share. Wait, wait. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to get my head around how to share my screen. Yeah, you have a small square with the arrow. Yeah, yeah, I found yeah. it. Nice, nice, nice. <clears throat> well, uh, hi everyone. It's a pleasure to see such huge interest into this project, and we are happy to be a part of it as ourselves. Uh, I will go through quite briefly on two main questions, which is the current situation, talent, and which is what do we actually need? What do we look through this particular project? Obviously, I might have not covered some aspects uh, co which have been covered uh, in my colleague's presentation over Copenhagen, but uh, I I'm pretty sure we can answer questions. Basically, uh, just to give you a brief view of what Tallinn is, it's about half a million uh, in its population, Tallinn itself, and if we go uh, through its surroundings, which people actually... Um, Economically influencing Tallinn, it's a little bit more than half a million people, which is relatively not that much, but still this is where we are. Uh, and um, we have uh, looked forward to uh, trying to make people uh, use public transportation over the past couple of years, uh, trying to make pu public transportation free for uh, Tallinn citizens. I think there is not many cities in the world uh, who have introduced free public transportation. Uh, on the other hand, we are trying to upgrade uh, the quality level of our uh, public transport units. For example, this year we have bought 150 uh, carbon neutral, well, almost carbon uh, neutral CNG buses. And we will continue to invest into green energy in future as well. Um, if we say, uh, like, what is the reason uh, for us to be in this project is basically because we are, uh, well, we have a problem, which is uh, talent is about 50% of the total uh, CO2 emissions, uh, which are related with transportation in Estonia. And we have an aim target to pretty much uh, get as uh, sustainable as possible uh, by 2050. So, and there is the other challenge we have is basically people are not always making rational uh, behavior uh, decisions, uh, which leads to the factor that there is 470 
vehicles per thousand citizens in Tallinn, which is relatively high. Uh, and as a result, our uh, infrastructure, trans transport infrastructure is basically working almost at its limit. And because there is a lot of new opportunities in terms of uh, technology, it would make good sense to uh, give it a go and maybe solve some of our problems and be uh, more uh, green if possible. So basically, if we go through the challenges, then we have three main challenges, uh, challenges which is pretty much people optimizing people flow. Uh, we would really uh, like if uh, we could get something like real uh, time travel information in the future, which could be also used for uh, macro scale trans transportation modeling and understanding uh, which decisions would suit uh, the city more in general, uh, and as well, logistics is always good to uh, give uh, transport infrastructure users and a good understanding of where, when they could do it without any traffic jams and when is their movement more sustainable. And pretty much this would result in uh, optimization, the overall uh, traffic flows. Now, I do not have uh, in this presentation any info about uh, uh, data location, <clears throat> our open source data locations. However, we have them provided in previous communications. Uh, if you need anything to know, you can feel free to send me an email or something. But uh, nevertheless, uh, we have a governmental portal with all uh, talent provided data available on the open source. Uh, as well, uh, regarding uh, test locations, I think that uh, this is a very open topic and de fully depends on, on, on the project results. I mean, anything you guys come up with will require a specific location to be piloted. And I think this is where we can think of where it can be done. And, and I'm pretty sure we will find a place for it because previously we have already tested autonomous vehicles and a lot of other stuff. So I think that's about it from Talon. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Yes, there is, um, um, there is a, at least one question that, uh, for you, um, Grigori, that are the buses in Tallinn already electric? electric? This is a very good question. Uh, do you mean like electric buses? Okay. Uh, well, uh, if you mean electric buses, I would say uh, electric buses, it's a very complicated technology in terms of public transportation, and they are more reliable on infrastructure than any other mode of uh, pu public transportation in general, even more. Uh, it relies more on the el electricity infrastructure even more than trams and trolleys, to be honest, because you always need to find ways how to connect them to the timetables and how to schedule, uh, for example, uh, their charging stations and charging timetables as well. Um, and, and we find it a very important before buying in electricity uh, buses to actually look into the technology and actually understand how things should work in ideal life. And for these reasons, over the past couple of years, we have tested uh, something like five various models of uh, five different uh, producers of electric uh, bus technology. And we are currently trying to kind of build up a way of understanding how these things could work ideally for talent just to understand which ones uh, should we choose, which, which type of technology of electric buses should we uh, choose. And that goes to both like uh, which charging systems, which uh, like battery chemistry systems uh, and a lot more to come, to be honest. Uh, are you planning any innovation on the public procurement side like Amsterdam just presented? Uh, well, uh, I think uh, because I'm more a uh, transportation expert, I'd say this is more a question to Mart, who is also uh, 
on the line. Uh, Mart, could you answer this question for me, please? Uh, hello, my name is Mart. I'm the project manager from uh, Tallinn. Uh, no updates to give you at this point of time. Okay, and then there was also questions, are there real-time data sets in, in Tallinn available? So maybe uh, related. Uh, yeah, I see the question. Basically, uh, regarding data, we have, for example, we have 20, uh, something like 20, uh, to 20 intersection, intersections with, within uh, Tallinn, which operate uh, data uh, collecting sensors, which forward data to our uh, like to our office pretty much to our to, to our traffic control center however i would say that uh data is normally available within one day after it's collected but we do look forward to towards uh getting real-time data collection techniques on our boat um as well we have uh, we we do have uh, public transportation sensors which count uh, passengers, uh, but again, it takes something about one day to upload them. Uh, if we talk about cameras, uh, th this is actually a very complicated question because um, if you use cameras to identify, uh, we, we cannot use cameras to identify travelers. This is first of all. What we can use cameras for is to actually understand how many people are, uh, how, how many vehicles are traveling through a particular point in a particular uh, section of time. And basically, uh, it's relatively hard, hard, I would say, to actually understand where from to where people move. Uh, for this instance, at the moment, we, we mainly try to use uh, mobile phone data at some extent. However, uh, we should also pay very uh, huge attention towards uh, data security aspects, which we have in our country. So, yeah, um, I don't know if I answered the question. I, I mean, there is a lot of problems with, with particularly cameras. Uh, this is very good to know. You could also email me at some point. I'd be more than happy to communicate. Okay. Then, okay. So maybe that there. That's all the questions for for Tallinn. So now we can try again to get a connection to the to the Copenhagen and Tina. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, excellent. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah, perfect, perfect. So, so now you can take the screen and... and... Yes. Yep. Hopefully, it's like coming something through now. Yes. Yes, yeah. you can see it. Yeah. Yes, good afternoon. I'm <laughs> pleased you can hear me now. Uh, I am uh, the project coordinator from uh, Copenhagen, city of Copenhagen, and we are very pleased to be in this uh, very interesting uh, project together with a lot of interesting cities. Um, we have this. Uh, great goal in, in Copenhagen to become CO2 neutral by uh, 2025 in, uh, in Copenhagen. And it's, uh, it's really a huge uh, ambition for us. Uh, it's uh, related to, of course, energy consumption and production and also about the city administration and uh, also mobility. But in this um, project, we uh, focus on energy consumption and uh, the renovation of building and flexible energy use and also, of course, uh, city administration and all the buildings we have in Copenhagen. Um, actually, um, oh, I have, sorry, I chose the wrong presentation, but never mind. I will say what I really want to, <laughs> to say here. Um, the, 
we look into uh, the sustainability of our uh, public building and uh, the reason why is uh, we need them to store some of the electricity or heating because we really need to be more flexible when it comes to the energy use. And the reason why is that uh, we depend on uh, renewable energy already in 2020. It was 50% of uh, wind energy in, uh, in Denmark. And as you can see, we have uh, the wind power is uh, going up and down as yeah, the wind blows and the uh, demand, it also varies uh, in the day. So we have to make sure that we have someone who can store some of the energy or consume at the, the peak hours. Seems to have frozen my my screen here. But what I really uh, wanted to to stress is that oh, is that uh, um, we are. Uh, at the moment, at the moment, uh, in a little pilot project together with the district heating uh, company, which is uh, Hufo, um, and uh, we are already looking into some of the the heat demands, so we might uh, be able to to heat up the buildings in in the mornings before uh, all the students come to to the schools and then we can save some energy when everybody else is taking a shower. So that's really the, the main uh, focus for, for us. And we really, uh, we are struggling to, to reach our goal to become CO2 neutral by 2025. We need uh, more than 400,000 tons CO2. And it's only, we have only four years to, to reach this uh, ambitious goal. So we really hope that IA can, can help us in, in some way. Yes, I think I will. Uh, stop this presentation and sorry for getting the wrong it's this the technique just got me a bit nervous sorry about that questions yeah thank you tina yeah no problem Technic technical uh, issues are always <laughs> oh <laughs> something happens yeah but if yeah. anybody has a uh, questions to to tina and, and copenhagen so feel free to ask because we have a uh, we are ahead of our schedule so and why no mobility participation this is uh, because I, i'm part of a company solution lab and we are uh, managing the, the the projects we are not uh, the people who who knows uh, the things in, in in depth so our mobility section was too busy to take part of this uh, project so that's why but we are curious about the solution and also have also contact with the, the mobility section so they will look into the things you might come up with so it's uh, mark Walker from Helsinki from Fortic. so uh, just a question about this uh, this uh, <clears throat> Uh, demand response type of flexibility in your buildings uh, that uh, that you're planning. So, so do you already have uh, something like demand response signal for heating management from the whole board company? Uh, yes, we have uh, some heating management. It's called Energy Key. Uh, and we have uh, our data uh, for every hour. So uh, when we are going to work together with some of your companies. You will uh, get these data for heating, electricity, and, and water consumption. So it's available. We have a lot of data, but they are not on the open data portal. OK, brilliant. Thank you. Sounds good. And there is a question also that, do you use photovoltaic? Uh, or marine energy? Marine energy, not really, but of course we have some uh, photovoltaic. Uh, also have this international school in uh, um, in Norhaun. It's uh, the 
all the the building uh, facade is uh, covered with the uh, solar panels. And uh, so there is somebody that because you are not in that mobility, so you are not interested in those and. Uh, no, we'll look into the solutions, but we will not provide the data related to uh, mobility. Yes. Okay. And, and okay. 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 Yes, and, and then there's okay. one question for you as well. Uh, still, that do you have already a technology to detect uh, heat leaks? Hmm. Well, they have some, but uh, I think we'll be pleased to to find more and also to look into this renovation of uh, building and maybe uh, be able to to see where to retrofit first. It could be quite interesting. Okay. Um, and then there is a is a Francis look. Do you have any any uh, you were raised yeah. your hand? Yes, I was, I was just going to type it, but uh, let me just uh, ask. Thank you. Um, so I was, I, I'm, I'm actually preparing the submission, so I'm going through all the questions. And one of the questions it was asking, can we estimate how much CO2 we are going to save? Um, so in order to answer that question, we actually need to have quite a deep understanding of how the energy is mixed today and um, how it's consumed and how it's arranged. For example, the transmission also have uh, energy leakage, right? Yeah. But uh, I mean, I, I don't really have that level of understanding of how the electricity uh, market is running in Copenhagen. So I can only give a very rough estimate of what I know of, but not maybe in depth of how the energy is trading, import and export, all those is interrelated. So I'm just wondering, is it okay in the submission just to have a very, very initial estimate just based on our current understanding? But we can, of course, mature it during the phase one if we get into it. Is it okay yeah. with that? Yeah. Yes, of course. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes. Just that we can see that you, you, you are looking for this uh, CO2 reduction and if it's 20 or 40 percent we will look into this when we have all, all the data but it's more like the design of the solution for this uh, first phase so it's it's quite fine yeah thank you and then one question about the locations that uh, have you and we haven't exactly chosen them, but it could be uh, some of the school. We have uh, 63 schools in Copenhagen. It can also be office buildings. Uh, and yeah, we'll look into it when, when we know who you are. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Right. And then is there a... Um, how, you do how you collect and manage energy data is the question to you. Um, yes, we, we, we do that uh, through our building management system. Um, so it's, uh, we have these hourly data and it's managed by uh, Energy Key is the system we use for, for this. So um, I think I yeah, already mentioned that. Right. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, well, again. But the questions coming here. Which sensors do you use to monitor the state of buildings and green buildings? Which sensors? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <laughs> we have a very special one <laughs> to pick them out. Um, yeah, well, it's it's a lot of uh, data, and also uh, we look into that. And we would also like to have some sensors which can tell us a bit about the indoor climate of the the building. Uh, and of course, we have the official guidelines about how much energy they use per square meters. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, monitoring systems. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. Perhaps we can move on again. Uh -huh, okay. It's quite area for the cities that to choose the flexibility solutions. Well, it depends on, on the solution. So we are considering them all together. And, and so we, we don't have 
because we are looking for innovations, we are not uh, defined them very, very precisely or not at all. So, so we are ex waiting for your for your ideas. Yeah. Uh, um, during understand the cities want to. Um, yeah. Uh, well, yes, we are. We it's the rules of the PCP that that um, uh, that uh, we are asking you to to give a budget for for whole project, uh, but but it's only estimation and and uh, it can be defined later. But but we we like to see some kind of estimations about the whole project, although that we are selecting companies for only first phase now. Okay, let's uh, then um, we would like to invite the Paris region, the Cap Digital and, and uh, the cities from, from there to, to stage. So, so straight and Hello, straight. hello everyone. Can you hello. hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Well, okay, well. I, will, I will share my screen. Oh, hi, Margot. <laughs> Do you want to say a few words? Uh, I, we can hear you. So just to introduce quickly, so I'm Margot de Caminel. I'm working at Cap Digital, which is uh, the partner for the Ile-de-France region. And now we are working closely so with the uh, metropole. Uh, of Paris region, uh, so that uh, Agathe is a representative of, and she will uh, introduce this territory, and then we will proceed with two uh, city examples. Thanks. Um, can you see my screen? Okay, no, this is Yes, sorry, sorry, we can. Yeah. And now it should be okay. Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay, good. Um, it's not in full screen. Though. No, it's not because okay. uh, if if so, you will see all well, two two screens. So. I, I guess it's fine, and you will you will even save the the presentation uh, after uh, after my speech. So, um, so hello everyone. I'm Agathe Fourquet. I'm a project manager at La Métropole du Grand Paris, in charge of the urban innovations topics. And uh, as I was not sure if you were all familiar with the, what la Métropole du Grand Paris was, we decided along with Margot to present you uh, and to give you a quick overview of uh, what is la Métropole. And we also wanted to present some innovative initiatives uh, that are taking place uh, in la Métropole. That's why we invited Isile Moulineau and Anthony to, to present also. So, um, in 2016, um, 131 municipalities joined uh, together to create la Métropole du Grand Paris um, and to act together in areas as important as uh, urban planning, housing, emergency uh, accommodation and fight against climate change. Um, there are 22 metropolis in, par in France, but uh, ours is definitely the, the biggest one. Just to give you to give you an overview, so the city of Paris is at the heart of the metropole, but uh, uh, we have uh, so, uh, 130 more cities that are part of the metropole. Uh, it's about the size of New York City, and it's uh, mostly a dense urban area. Um, we have more than seven uh, million inhabitants. In la metropole, it represents 25% of the French DPD concentrated, concentrated in this zone and um, more than 200 um, elected officials are driving the metropole's actions. So most of them are mayors, 
from different pa political parties <laughs> and adding cities that, as you see, have different sizes. And their role is to take common actions and decisions to improve the quality of life of its residents, uh, reduce inequalities, and develop an urban, social, and economic sustainability model and tools to improve attractiveness and competitiveness uh, for the benefits of the entire uh, national, national territory. So three quick examples of what we have done uh, since 2016. The first one is the largest low emission zone uh, in Europe. Um, it's a permanent fixed zone and not dependent on weather conditions. And it means that no vehicles, uh, trucks, car, uh, motor scooter have the right to drive within this zone if they don't have a certain type of air quality uh, certification. We are also working on a logistic plan uh, with cities, of course, but also organizations and companies to harmonize the regulations of across the Paris, the greater Paris area, uh, develop river transports and uh, foster innovations uh, in the public space. And last but not least, um, the competition named Let's Invent the Metropolis of Grand Paris. Um, it was, it's known as the largest competitions in Europe for innovative um, urban projects. And uh, it has been launched in 2017 and two competitions have been held and the principle is uh, quite clear. Myers bring lands um, under their control and transfer them to the companies that are presenting the best projects after a jury uh, deliberation, and it's now more than 80 sites within the, the metropole that have been upgrade, upgraded uh, thanks to this uh, competitions. So now that you know more about uh, La Metropole du Grand Paris, uh, you will discover two concrete examples of what the cities within the, the metropole are doing uh, regarding climate change. And Eric Legal, I know you are connected. Uh, the floor is yours now. I will pass through the slides, so don't, do not hesitate to tell me next. <laughs> okay, thank you, Agathe, and uh, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Eric Legal. I'm working for the city of um, Isili Moulineau. Um, this is, um, is a small city, so one, we're, we represent 1% of the population of the Greater Paris, but we are one of the major hub of uh, Greater Paris Innovation Field. The next one, please. Um, we have 70,000 uh, inhabitants, and, but with more jobs than inhabitants, uh, we have a particularly dynamic economic fabric, and innovation and digital technologies are the economical driving force of the city, with about 50% of our employees in this sector. And almost 60% of the companies based in EC are in information and communication technology, including some great company like Orange, Capgemini, Microsoft, or, or Cisco, for example. The next one, please. Okay, you should know that uh, digital technology um, play a big role for um, our development strategy. And the city digital transformation starts 25 years ago, and the population is one of the most connected in France. Since the beginning of this digital transformation of the country, we were often among the first French people uh, to benefit from new technology or new services. Um, or, but our ambition for the next decade, for this decade, is to use these digital to tools to adapt the city uh, to climate change. And the City Council adopted last week, for example, the first French climate budget. And we want, in particular, to develop an open, an open data approach to access and measure our effort to reduce the greenhouse gases. The next slide. And But it's not uh, totally new for us. The next slide, please. <laughs> Um, because we, we host the first French smart grid in uh, 20, uh, 
11, not 11, 12, and uh, starting from the end to implement an energy optimization approach on a district, district scale. The project EC Grid has grown uh, considerably since this time. The area, for example, was extended to a new district called the Fort of EC. And um, we have also increased in terms of network management with an energy dashboard specially developed and designed by a local startup and storage solutions made from old cars batteries, for example. In total, 2,000 homes and 5,000 inhabitants were affected by this demonstrator, which was completed uh, two years ago. And for the future, our short time ambition is to demonstrate how to easily and at a low cost reduce the energy consumptions of our public buildings. That means sport, cultural, schools, administrative facilities. Well, it was some word about uh, our city. Thank you, Eric. Margot, do you want to talk about uh, the city of Antony? Uh, your mic is off. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> so I will be presenting two uh, projects of uh, the city of Antony because her representative Alina could then be uh, assisting to this uh, webinar today. Uh, but you will have her contact uh, at the end of the presentation in uh, case you have some uh, question or you would like to have any precision of what I will present. So uh, the first project uh, I would like to share with you uh, was a project implemented rega regarding uh, external air quality for the city of Antony. So air quality is one of the main issues of the cities and uh, they have developed several experiments around this topic. So um, this project was a challenge based project um, where the city wanted to implement innovative digital solution to improve its air quality. So the goals for the city were to uh, so measure precisely the air quality locally, to promote uh, communication on air quality in the city neighborhood, and to involve citizens in the process through changes in individual or collective behaviors. So for this, they uh, select two companies to develop uh, decision support tools and an application. So they have to uh, install 18 uh, sensors within the cities and then the decision support tool, uh, so including modelings and scenario and recommendation was developed to help the cities to anticipate and respond to the pollution episodes, to identify the action to be taken to improve the air quality and then to um, better uh, inform the citizen within the cities. For the last one, they have developed an application. So you can see here on the on the right the, the screen of the application. Um, and so this was for the citizens to um, have an idea of the air quality. Uh, helado, si quieren, um, también, Victoria. And also to um, to have some advice on how to uh, improve the air quality. So for example, the need to ventilate uh, a place or a need to go out, or uh, sometimes it can also be uh, on what kind of um, mobility uh, mobility usage you have to use uh, to uh, go from one point to another. So uh, for the city, this challenge is really linked to the mobility challenge because the main sources of pollution for them comes from road traffic problems. They have actually a huge, a big highway and uh, some bus station terminals that uh, make a lot of pollution. So uh, for this uh, project on external air quality, the next step will be to define different scenarios for the urban and mobility planning to support the cities in defining their strategy. So for example, the question they have is, should the city center become pedestrian or should they put some more bicycle paths or some uh, mobility planning on the um, on those kind of questions to improve their uh, air quality. So then for the second uh, project, thanks Agathe. So it's uh, regarding mobility and parking observatory. So uh, here uh, the idea and the challenge is also linked to mobility. And uh, in the city, they have the project to um, 
to automate all the parking lots. So they have three kinds of parking uh, system. They have on-street parking, underground parking, and also, also a parking paddocks, paddock. So the idea is to have uh, all of them uh, automated based on a plate reading uh, technology. So uh, first of all, to be more efficient and also to have a better uh, data collection uh, and better idea of uh, the um, parking usage within the city. So uh, the underground parking lots are already equipped with barrier plate reading devices and uh, an app to pay um, your parking, uh, your parking usage, and um, then they want to equip the parking pad paddocks with the same kind of technologies. And for the on-street parkings, what they what they are uh, implementing at the moment are smart police with an electric car that is able to read the license plates uh, from the from the vehicles. So uh, the goals and benefits of such digitalization are, so of course, to better verbalize the users, but the, it's not the most important. The most important are two outcomes. The first one is to improve the road traffic thanks to a better turnover within the parking lots. So it will be easier to park. So there will be less traffic and then less pollution. And the second important outcomes will be to create an observatory of the mobility. So with all the data that they can gather from the parking lots, the city will be able to analyze the most frequented areas, for example. So here, one of the next steps will be to define what to do with all of this data to uh, take better uh, traffic management decision. So that's the two uh, projects they would like to share with us. And if you have a question, I might uh, redirect you to uh, Alina. Thank you. Thanks, Margot. Any questions? No, <laughs> I mean, you, you can write to us if, if you have some. Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, For some reasons, my my. Oh, we have one. <laughs> okay, we have one. Thank you, thank you, Jose. Um, so basically, we are open to all uh, the tenders, um, mobility and uh, air quality. Um, as I said, uh, we have uh, one hundred and thirty. Um, yes, one hundred and thirty-one cities that are potentially open to uh, to have some experimentation. So we are now scanning uh, with Margot all the needs of the cities and and I think we will be open to 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 examine all the the the, the tenders that are interested to develop something uh, in the Paris area. Uh, regarding that as uh, about pedestrian and cyc cyclists, I know um, I, I know that some cities are monitoring this, especially uh, since uh, they launched during the um, the lockdown some corona piste, <laughs> mm. so some specific uh, cycling uh, piste to. Uh, to 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 ease uh, to ease the mobility of cyclists uh, during uh, the Corona lockdown, and yes, uh, we will have some data. Uh, but now I have to to add them to the cities that are interesting to to share that with us. Um, Hi team, um, yes, there will be another round uh, of uh, inventing the Greater Paris Metropolis. Metropolis. Uh, 
and I'm not able to communicate right now, but there will be one uh, in during uh, 2021. Um, mm, 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 mm. Uh, David, I can. Uh, I don't know what. Um, I don't know how I can answer to this question. I don't know what to say. Maybe Margot, you can answer, David. Um, yeah, I think it's more a general question. Yeah. Uh, on the solution, I think you should. Uh, but Kaisha, maybe you can answer. But uh, the idea is to uh, offer one solution and then to see uh, how it fits the uh, city's uh, needs. Um, and then we will have a match between the solution and the city needs. But Kaisha, maybe you can uh, comment on that. Yes, co yeah, that's correct. And and uh, it doesn't the solution doesn't have to fit to all the cities. Um, and uh, the the piloting is is done in two of the cities. So we have time to 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 modify and and discuss and negotiate that how it goes. But uh, but. Uh, there might be some change and uh, differences between the cities, but uh, despite of that, we are we are doing uh, doing this together, and we have the common common goals and common needs to to all of us. Also, if I can add uh, on the data uh, that we have, we already have listed some open data sources on the AI for City website. And I think once we will have the solution and identify these cities, we will be able to answer in depth into the data that we have, maybe more than uh, now. But uh, maybe I guess you can uh, complete. Um, uh, the thing is, we will um, we will communicate and um, and sh uh, and share the fact that we are joining a AI for cities to cities in April. Um, so so now we have some cities that are pretty interesting, like like Issy les Molino and Anthony. Um, but we we have to talk to Paris. We have to talk to other cities. So that's the the an answer for Levant um, that is asking if the pilots will take place in Anthony. Yes, maybe, <laughs> but uh, some some other cities or maybe Sile Molino or, or others will be interested also uh, to host some pilots. Mm. Um, and now just reading your question. Yes, uh, if I can, I can uh, reply to yeah, the okay. question that yes, that uh, solution or that your proposed solution is uh, is good if it's a uh, uh, it's a response to the tender objectives and and then we will see that how it how it feels uh, fits to the different cities when we are evaluating them. Yes, indeed. And um, what was something? Yeah, and for. Yeah, OK, so you already reply <laughs> on that. Yes, no problem. OK. So we can, you can still, uh, we can maybe move on okay. to okay. Stavanger and, and we can come back to these questions uh, in the end of, of, of this webinar. There is time for the questions still. So if, um, yes, yes, Henrik, you are already there. Nice. So welcome. So now it's uh, Stavanger's turn to to tell about your situation and visions. Let's see if we can share as well. Can you see on the screen now? Yes, we can. Yes. 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 So, hi, uh, my name is Nils Hanakola. Uh, I'm uh, working for the municipality of Stavanger. Uh, and I'm project lead here in AI for Cities. 
Um, so for those of you who don't know Stavanger, Stavanger is on the southwest coast of Norway. We have around 140,000 inhabitants, so it's not it's not Paris size, but it's uh, it's the fourth largest city in uh, Norway. As you can see, Stavanger is uh, located on the on the coastline. Um, <laughs> this is uh, as a map of the city has just been expanded. Um, the interesting part is that we used to be a city quite sort of. Um, um, we, we lived uh, close to each other, but then suddenly we have uh, also uh, expanded to a lot of cities, no uh, islands, uh, which creates also an interesting geography. Uh, also, when we uh, we speak about especially mobility, so uh, Stavanger is a city and it's a new municipality from uh, from last year. Um, in the region around Stavanger, agriculture is uh, is a big thing. We produce uh, quite a lot of the the produce um, in in Norway and also um, blue economy around. Uh, around fishing and also um, yeah um, sort of uh, agriculture on the sea bottom <laughs> is uh, is also expanded um, uh, Stavanger has since uh, late 60s uh, has been the the, uh, the main energy and oil city in Norway and of course now we are seeing uh, a shift away from this, or we we have to have uh, more feet to to stand on, to put it that way. Um, the last four or five years, uh, Stavanger has started its uh, smart city development. Uh, this originated in uh, us participating in what was called the Triangulum project, which was a, a smart city age twenty twenty project. Um, uh, so, uh, transport-wise, uh, Stavanger is from the compact city to uh, sort of um, bigger distances. Uh, these islands are connected also uh, with uh, underwater tunnels, uh, some of them quite long. Um, we have buses and we have uh, cars. We have. Um, we drive too much, <laughs> to put it that way. Uh, so um, uh, the search for uh, new ways of, uh, of moving uh, is a big uh, topic. And of course, we have a, a need for uh, new transport solutions uh, and uh, new and green business. Uh, this is uh, sort of uh, trying to say something about the greenhouse emissions, uh, which tells you that the road traffic is the biggest source. Uh, in Norway, we are quite sort of fortunate. Uh, we have a lot of uh, hydro generated uh, power. So f for us, uh, energy is not um, um, our main focus in this pro uh, project, but but still, we have said that we want to be open and look at uh, energy uh, proposals as well. Uh, but we will we will be uh, given uh, um, a bigger uh, share of of the um, of the mobility proposals than the energy ones. Uh, so yeah, mobility in Stavanger and buses and ferries. Uh, and uh, trains as well, but we don't have any trams or uh, anything like this. But we have, of course, cars. There, uh, e-cars is quite big in Norway. Uh, probably uh, world-leading, I think, the development of uh, or the use of uh, e-cars. Um, there is development towards car sharing. There's uh, uh, an increasing amount of e-scooters, of course, city bikes, and also uh, alternatives on, on more active mobility. 
uh, and that's uh, of course the direction that uh, we would like uh, to move in as well. Um, so this is um, yeah, this is uh, in Norwegian, but it says uh, how we move about, and the big uh, yellow thing is uh, is car driving. So um, we tend uh, to drive a lot. Um, we are developing mobility points in uh, Stavanger. We opened one last year, which uh, mobility point is, yeah, you probably know, but it's a point uh, sort of connecting different modes of transport, making the switch easier. Uh, we are opening four new ones in 2021. Um, so, uh, Stavanger is reducing the CO2 emissions by 80% by 2030 compared to 2015. Um, and road traffic is sort of the main issue. Uh, we are not responsible for our um, local public transport, uh, but we are um, for this project uh, aiming to cooperate with uh, Columbus, which is the uh, the local uh, transport authority. Uh, more people are, or increasing number of people are cycling today than they used to be. This is a number that we hope to increase. Um, we are buying <laughs> ever more um, electric cars. Uh, too many deliveries. Uh, locally are made by half empty cars, which we feel uh, which we feel that there could be done something about this. Uh, for the center of Stavanger, um, an investigation showed that uh, one third of the deliveries are made by one two thirds of the vehicles. So, um, and we used to have uh, uh, local markets and buy uh, local uh, produce. Um, this seems to be decreasing. Um, uh, if you buy food, for example, you buy it in, a, of course, um, a local food store. But that's um, normally been transported quite far uh, before it uh, reaches uh, the shop. So uh, we are not taking enough advantage of uh, the fact that we are producing a lot of uh, agricultural products ourselves. Um, <clears throat> and the cost for transport of transport uh, is a burden for business. Uh, and, and then I think uh, local transport costs more than long distance transport uh, relatively. Um, so just want to say something quick about this. We are um, we think there is a potential uh, in optimizing uh, and coordinating transport of uh, goods and parcels. So the urban logistics, it's one of the, the, the challenge, the sub challenges uh, on mobility. Um, and we hope uh, that uh, by focusing on this, we could uh, have a system where the transport of local goods is, is more optimized, uh, which we hope again would could lead to uh, uh, to a more active local uh, local market, uh, which could also improve the conditions for uh, for them for local supply. Um, we are also uh, looking at mobility as a service as a way of making public transport more um, uh, attractive and uh, easy to use uh, for the people of Stavanger. So it's easier for us to, uh, to choose uh, a bus or to walk or to, uh, to use uh, any other means of transport than, than using uh, the cars. Um, yeah. So these are basically the two um, the two um, 
focus areas that we um, uh, feel uh, would uh, be the biggest potential uh, for us in Stavanger. But uh, we are open uh, for, and we will look at, at all the interesting uh, possibilities in both mobility and also in energy. Uh, we have provided uh, um, data sources uh, on the website, uh, but I'm sure you, you will have uh, also questions about other data sources and then I hope um, you will contact us and, and ask us about it and we will uh, give you more information about it. Um, yeah, so basically that's it uh, if you have any have any questions um, feel free to ask thank you Nis Adik. there is already some questions to you so what's no, I lost. Mm. Do you already have deployed a MAR solution in Staringer? Uh, we don't have a, a mobility as a service solution in Staringer at the moment. No. Um, but uh, the uh, Columbus, the, um, the transport authority is is looking to develop this and looking to see how they can make use of it. But uh, are very interested in in um, in uh, seeing and testing testing uh, uh, solutions uh, in this project. Uh, there is a question here about. How does the municipality work with the PTA in the mobility field in Stavanger? Uh, I think in general, um, and they work quite closely. Um, I'm, <laughs> I, I don't work on mobility as such, so I don't work with this uh, every day, but, um, but there is a close relation uh, between, uh, between the municipality and, uh, and Columbus. Uh, and I and and the um, the transport uh, authority is is of course covering the whole region, not only Stavanger. Um, do you have OD historical data available from the past years? Someone has to help me with. Uh, <laughs> explaining what OD is. Yes, I I don't either do I know that oh. that's it's origin destination. Uh, I think we'll have to um, I, th I think I'll have to if if you can write that question to me I will I will I will answer it uh, afterwards. Can't do it uh, here on the fly. And maybe this was a more general question that data sources are the data provided bottom up by every city or have data been selected to able the comparison across various dimensions among cities? Well, it, um, those uh, data sources and, and um, uh, data models will vary from the city to city, so they are not so uh, that e equal and, and similar in same every, every place, so there is differences. I would say in Stavanger, I think we have made available the data sources that we have found that were could be relevant. But of course, uh, this is um, an area of development, and uh, and if we have <laughs> specific uh, questions regarding data sources, we we will uh, investigate further the possibilities of, uh, of making available more sources. Um, 
here and, and the COVID yeah. question is might be co comment that uh, more or less comment that uh, yes it can be now be uh, make some some changes in the behavior but but uh, uh, it's uh, one of those topics that, that that you as a suppliers should concern in in your in your solutions and with the private firms for good are there any agreements with private firms for good transportation the day are the data about the loads available well maybe uh, that depends on the company that's it to be asked from there yeah, yeah. No, more or less talking about about the public data open data which is collected by the cities I guess it's an interesting question, though, if uh, if we need uh, data or if we want data from uh, from private uh, firms of good tra goods transportation. We haven't made any agreements, but mm -hmm. uh, maybe if that's uh, what the solution will re require, then we could look into it if, if we can uh, make such a cooperation. Yes, or the companies can do that by themselves because they don't need to, to use only this data that we are providing. So yeah. it can be a combination of those different kind of data sources or you can collect the data by yourself as well. Mm. So you don't need to count only our, our uh, sources. Okay, but now we maybe go to the last yeah. question. Uh, sorry, questions at uh, the presentation. It's uh, it's come from the Helsinki and, and situation here. So it's um, Pasi Rautio, are you available? And 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 thank you for Miss Hendrik for your presentation. Of, of course, that. Thank you. That, uh, okay, and Pasi is there. Okay. Pasi so, is here. Thank you. Um, okay, just wait a second so I share my screen. Now, can you see my screen? Yes, very well. Yes, that's great. Well, hello, everyone. I see there's still few people hearing my presentation and I work for the city of Helsinki and I work in a data analytics team as a leading expert here and I'm kind of uh, aware about this AI for cities and the project itself. And I try to a little bit present some aspects that we do uh, in Helsinki and what is our perspective uh, towards AI and our services and what kind of data you could use when you kind of plan those projects you are providing us. So we have a city strategy that says that we want to be the most functional city in the world. And that means quite a lot. And to achieve this goal, we need to make the best use of digital technologies. So we want to use uh, AI and data analytics and digital services. And this, how we operate, is based on openness and transparency. And this is really a crucial thing in our uh, way of thinking. And also we want to use a largely uh, AI robotation and everything, new technologies. Uh, our city is quite large. We have large services that we provide to the citizens. We have almost 40,000 people for working for the city of Helsinki. We have uh, social services and healthcare division. So we have some hospitals and doctors and nurses working for us. And also we have culture and leisure division. Uh, so we have some theaters, swimming halls and these kind of things. And also we have education division. So we have schools, uh, kindergartens, and also we have central administration. And also the most important thing for you is the urban environment division. So we have large scale of services we provide to the citizens. And we we want to be the most functional city in the world. And this means that we want to uh, change our services 
Nowadays, we provide those uh, reactive way, but we would like to provide those in the future proactive way. So citizens don't have to apply our services. They don't have to uh, fill a form to get the service. We actually could uh, kind of know before the citizens actually needs the service. So we could actually provide the service before he or she has to uh, apply it. And also have a new data strategy in Helsinki. There's the link, uh, this uh, link here, and you can find how we kind of think about data and how we want to share the data, how we want to use the data, and what kind of master data we have or should have. And also there's another link uh, in my presentation you can find here that tells how we think about digitalizations and services. But some things I would like to tell you about the data strategy. Uh, our vision there is that Helsinki's data is the most usable and used urban data by 2025. So that means two things. Uh, we have to have lots of data. It have to be usable. We have to uh, have it uh, correct data. We have to have uh, APIs to the data and uh, we could share it. And also the other side is it's the most used urban data. So that means that companies could use it and the organization itself could use it uh, more or in our services. And we have kind of ecosystems to use the data. So this is really crucial things in what we're thinking at the moment. And in data strategy, we have four objectives. Uh, we want to uh, have proactive and personalized services at people's terms. And this is the how we provide proactive way those services. And also we have data driven decision making. So this means that we have lots of data we could uh, rely on our decisions. And also we want to try and do optima optimizing cities operations. So we don't do wrong things and we do it most uh, efficient way. And also we want to fostering business ecosystems uh, with our data. So we want to provide this data they need to uh, build their companies or services. And this all is uh, based on trust. In Finland, citizens trust to the government and also the cities, city, and we have to maintain this trust. And uh, we can't use AI in our services if people don't trust us or the way we use the uh, AI. And that's why we have AI register. Uh, there's a link down there. And this is uh, made with city of Amsterdam. And we have this kind of description of every AI solutions we are using in city. Well, there are not everyone yet, but we are producing those in, in that website. You can check what kind of things we want to tell about the AI solutions we are using. We want to share about bias information. If there is any bias, we want to tell what kind of data we are using and what uh, the algorithm is based on. And then uh, the 3D model and digital twin of the city. Uh, we we have lots of data about our city. We have this, uh, sorry, there wasn't the link yet. As we have two kind of models in our 3D model, and there's reality mesh model, which is kind of nice looking, and then there's semantic city GML model, where is actual data about our buildings, and you can have lots of information about the surfaces and what kind of material that surface is and what kind of a solar a solar energy there would be. So this all data is uh, provided in our webs 
websites and its open data. So you can base your service on this data. And there's lots of layers in our models. There's this open data utilization, and also there's these two models, reality model and city GNML model, and also the data layers. And we also gather all new ways of gather the data from the city. And that's why we have also the IoT things going on in the city as well. And also we have this kind of a Kalasatama area in city where we have lots of uh, projects uh, with citizens and with companies where companies can uh, test their ideas and uh, services. And if uh, you want to provide some kind of new services based on um, city GNML or something else, we actually could try it in Kalasatama. You can find more information in website. Uh, what we have done based on the 3D model, we already have this Helsinki Energy and Climate Atlas. Uh, there's calculated all the solar energy potential of the buildings. So you can actually think where you would like to put a solar panels and where is the most potential of putting it. And this is something re really great uh, solution from the actual data. And also there's other kind of solutions. We have made this kind of pilot where we can uh, see if uh, what sea uh, level rises, how it would affect the city and buildings. And this is something you can also check from the website. Uh, there's more information in YouTube. There's YouTube channel where you can find some videos. They uh, tell about 3D model and they uh, also present how we are using it and what kind of solutions we have already made. And also there's website and it's all in English. You can find more information from there. And also the city of Helsinki wants to be carbon neutral city in 2035. And also there's a link to our website where there's more information about the goals and how we want to achieve that goal. And as I said, all the data we have in 3D model or other services, we have this uh, website called uh, Helsinki Region InfoShare. You can find there op all the open data Helsinki provides to, to the companies. You can uh, find there also APIs and also some uh, Excel sheets or other kind of way we provide the data. And uh, that data is also uh, presented in English in some cases. That was my short introduction for City of Helsinki. Maybe you have some questions now. Thank you, Thank Bas you. If you have any questions, please. Well, we have only the echo here as well, so something, some problems, but uh, yeah. But at, at least, Pasi, uh, you had a huge amount of, of um, uh, those uh, links where you can find um, find um, the more information. Here's a question about Kalastama. And uh, is Kalastama the designed pilot area for the project? I can say that yes, it can be, depending on the on the uh, on the solutions as the. Se it's one of the examples that can be, and uh, it's a suburb, a very brand new suburb in, in very close to city centre, so it's uh, one option. Uh, who is the responsible for public transport in Helsinki? Is the county or municipality? It's a, it's a county or city-owned company, I suppose. It's yes. A question, and, and there is a link on the website on our data data uh, uh, website uh, 
the, 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 in the page that we have collected data is also about the transportation data available, which is from Helsinki. Yes. And I can give you the link there. Yeah. Chat. And how much the Helsinki Digital Twins capture information on user behaviors? Does it do that? Do you know? Uh, sorry, how much the City Digital Twin capture information user behaviors? Uh, sorry, I, I don't know about that. Uh, users behavior. Do you mean uh, citizens uh, behavior or how people or companies are using the 3D model, which one you mean? The first one. So how we, uh, well, no, we don't uh, do that. Uh, we uh, only use the data about the buildings and the city structure in 3D model. And that is the way we use that. And uh, there's some AI uh, cases that we kind of, uh, um, try to figure out how people are using the uh, city space like uh, camera vision where AI kind of counts the people in a Senate square, but it's only anonymous and it counts people in Corona time, but we don't kind of uh, try to uh, follow people anyway. Yeah. And uh there is already that link to that um, that transportation data that oh. thank you you hope that he already oh, yes, managed yes. to find a link for you and and could the digital twin be used by the other cities uh, maybe i don't uh, know what does that mean this uh yes this model is uh kind of similar some with other cities uh rotterdam is one of the cities that is very uh high uh, capable of using 3D models, just as Helsinki. And we also do some kind of a collaboration with Tab City of Tallinn that we kind of uh, try to do project based on 3D model. But uh, every city has their own kind of model, but G uh, that G GML model is mostly used when it's used this 3D. Yeah. Um, well, there's the question, are private vehicles, car sharing fleets, GPS predators available? I, I really don't know, sorry and they are private companies or or they might no sorry i don't know but they are not uh, provided in our uh, websites no uh, what are the best resources uh, for live traffic um, so there might be some um, um, is there any cameras or anything that that can is is uh, counting the traffic? I don't know. Have to say. Have to find out. It uh, or maybe you Pasi knows as well that. Yeah, but Juha is already. <laughs> Juha is uh, my help here. Thank yeah. you, Juha. Juha is uh, one of uh, Pasi's colleagues in city, so so the, he's helping us uh, very well and and be. Um, working with those issues as well. OK, so if there is not any more questions, we can go. Thank you, Pasi, for your presentation. And then we maybe can move on uh, to the questions that we have got advanced. And um, and uh, I, I can try to, to change to, and be a presenter now. Uh, Kaisa, yes. do I send you the presentation or how do I share this with people? Yes, please, you can do, yes, so we can share it with, um, with the audience then. And that's uh, the same, same um, wish for the other uh, presenters as well, that if you could please um, send the presentations to me so we can share them. 
also I can put it to the chat there, but I sent you as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And and so, so let's let's move on. And there. So now you can see my screen again. So So um, we will put these, and these are the questions, some of the questions we have got advanced, and, and we will uh, publish them on the website as well. So we are not maybe going through them, the, the whole, all, the, all the, the answers, but anyway, there is uh, some questions has been coming about those uh, uh, data and, and uh, heating, sorry. And, uh, and I think that many of these questions are already answered that during this this uh, webinar so one question is general question that are you interested in the smart heating for the old bu uh, buildings yes indeed because most of the city, uh, buildings in the cities are already existing and and uh, they need that kind of uh, um, work that become more uh, energy efficient uh, and traffic cameras as well there has been a questions and and some some cities have that information and some doesn't, so it depends uh, and varies from the city to city. And uh, uh, and about those different kind of uh, technological issues and, and IoT devices, so we have not, uh, as a buyer's group, we have not excluded any technical solutions uh, and we don't have any favours at the moment. So. So that's that's uh, not um, those. Um, we don't have uh, any rules for that. And to Paris, this is a very detailed questions. But the, do you need to be a, a member of the Cap Digital to to be eligible? No, you don't. So this is open to all kind of companies and all sizes and all countries. And also, this has been also already discussed that, that there is no standard data format in uh, which which the cities are shared or using. Uh, yeah. And this also has already covered that yes, you don't need to 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 target the solution to any of those cities if, and uh, and those city agnostics solutions are very good. And we will then consider during the project that and see what what kind of data is available and what are the conditions in the cities that how these pilots would be done. Uh, yes, and and uh, will the beneficiary help to identify test sites? Yes, and the relationship uh, rela relationship to the stakeholders. Yeah, we, we will help you and and discuss together with you that which would be the the best place to to test your solution. And this private vehicle question has come up quite many times, but um, cities don't have that kind of data, so it's up, up to the delivery companies. Uh, and then about the, 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 the was it, is there any, um, any um, dif differences between the sub challenges and wildcard? No, they are at the same level and, and this wildcard is for that purpose that that you can you can um, suggest something that has not come it, come uh, up our minds um, on the city's mind during that um, that um, preparing uh, period. Yes, and open open source and open APIs are recommended and and uh, but not not mandatory either. What are pretty, you are going to evaluate what the camera are in the, uh, indeed useful to reduce the, the carbon footprint. We are not evaluating the cameras, we are evaluating the solutions uh, capabilities to reduce the CO2 emissions. So it's um, not, not that kind of technical evaluation we are not doing. And then we have over 130 30 questions and answers in our web page already, so uh, I really recommend to read those questions. 
and uh, there is a website and and then those videos I mentioned in the beginning so presentations about the project and those uh, sub challenges are available there and we have also prepared a tendering guide for you to to help you to 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 execute this tender process and if you have any questions to us please use these these general email addresses info info or and uh, for the technical questions we have an, an dedicated email address as well so that's was our our part and and now we can maybe move on and if you have more questions we can now uh, try to answer on on those questions as well so i will move remove my presentation right okay so my camera is on now as well yeah so is there many questions which should be now has come up during that last minute mm, there we are is there some solution by the nature may only contribute indirectly the CO2 uh, reductions such as those that related to data models to perform better decision. Um, also that uh, models or solutions that uh, are working or making that indirectly are, are welcomed and uh, for example as Pasi presented uh, at the, in the Helsinki we are looking for better ways to, to make the decisions in the city, so they are part of that helping the decision making in these uh, domains. It can be a, one option as well. Uh, as well. And, um, yes, the better, more, one, yeah. Thank you, Mart, you have already replied on my all the questions. Excellent. Yes, and also indirect effects are good. Okay, but um, I suppose there is not more questions, so maybe we don't. We, now is now is time. We have still a few minutes to to uh, reply, but but if you don't have any, you can you can contact us later. And and uh, send the questions to us, and and we are publishing the answers on, on the website, so everybody are we able to, to see those answers as well. But I think this is this is all from our, our side, and, and I will thank you for your attention and, and participation. And have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.